this right here is Ultimate Nintendo Guide to the Super Nintendo Library 91 through 98. Now earlier I did a video talking about the one star games and I figured to give it a fair shake would talk about all the five star games. And I'm talking about five straight stars, not like a 4.5 or anything like that too. So a lot of your favorites may not even be on this video. And there actually might be a couple of games too that you'll be surprised got a five star rating by Pat or some of the other contributors of this book. Agree or disagree, let me know in the comments. And we'll be doing some other five star videos later on too, as well as other one star videos too. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any of those. I don't know why I've always just been nostalgic for this logo, this title, as it kind of slowly morphs in with the new Super Nintendo scaling and stuff like that. And then the weird little glitch it does right before it presents itself in full. Actraiser, 100%. I mean, Actraiser is probably my favorite Super Nintendo game. So yeah, five stars for me for sure. And it's not even a game I would have gravitated to in the first place unless I played it because, you know, early on in the Super Nintendo's lifespan, cool stuff, let's see what else is out there. You play a little bit of everything, even games that wouldn't really fit your fancy, just to see, because you never know. And oh boy, I'm glad I did. Very smart that the first thing you do in this game is an action platformer. It's a run and slash style game. Admittedly, and this comes from me, as much as I love ActRaiser, probably my favorite Super Nintendo game, this part, ah, it could have been better, you know? Like, it's just, like, you run and you slash and you jump and the controls are a little stiff. The controls are fine. It's just, you know, it's still missing some kind of something, but it plays fine. But the graphics are fantastic. The music is amazing. A pretty linear stage setup where you just have to get to the end and fight the boss. The boss is always kind of cool, too. And then the other part is the town building. Uh, this is the, the interesting part where uh, they come to the shrine and they pray and they speak to you and you help them in their needs. They say, oh, we need this. We need that. You need to do this. You need to do that. Oh, my God. Well, well almost quite literally. Uh, <laughs> you, you have to do these things like uh, use your use the elements to clear paths or, uh, you know, use other things to do other things later on in the game, too. Uh, there are also monsters on here that are trying to attack uh, your people. So you have to, uh, def you know, build the roads to get to where those monster layers are so they can eliminate those and you'll find more items and upgrades, more power-ups. The towns grow, the towns evolve, you move on to another area and those towns grow and those towns evolve. And every stage usually has a couple of platformer parts. Like you go in there and you start it off, kick, you know, kickstart the town and everything. And then later on they say, oh, hey, we found something way over here. Uh, make sure you go in there and defeat whatever's in there to uh, help us grow and prosper. So then you get kind of turn, turns into a secondary slashing part and stuff like that too but just even the relaxation uh, this is the part too if it would have started if this game would have started with this little town building type thing it may not have been as popular as it was but the fact that it started out with a little action platformer slashy th slash and then you move on from there it's like okay you know a little, little uh, variety of gameplay here love me some act racer definitely worth five stars you're gonna tell someone that this is not a five-star game? Man, listen. So, Chrono Trigger, I mean, come on, it's Chrono Trigger. Came out a little bit later in the Super Nintendo lifespan. I mean, before that, we've already had a couple of Final Fantasy games. We've had a Secret of Mana, stuff like that too. And then we move on to Chrono Trigger. And this is the game uh, that, man, everyone just gravitated to. It's like it took all the best elements of all the best games so far, threw it all in here with an amazing story, amazing graphics, amazing music, Legendary music, but I still love it today. Cool cast of characters and everything like that. It's the reason why Chrono Trigger uh, still stands the test of time today. The battle element, little RPG style, little turn-based style kind of, you know. Um, you're not slashing your sword like you would with The Legend of Zelda, but you do, you know, you, you set it up and it plays fine. And this was during a time when JRPGs were the top dog. JRPGs were the things that people wanted to play. They wanted to gravitate to them. Everyone loved, you know, the Final Fantasy and all that. And then you have something like Chrono Trigger, and it just, it was, it was, a it's a five stars for sure. You can't deny it. The next game, well, admittedly it's not working right now, but I figured a video within a video, little open card surgery. Let's see if we can get this game working again. It also give me time to tell you about Factor, today's video sponsor. They are never frozen delivered to your front door, fresh meals that you can get every week. So many options to choose from too. Keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and protein plus meals on the menu each week, prepared by chefs, approved by dietitians. Now, you know, the first of the year with the resolutions and all that, just trying to eat better for myself here. Oof. And I'm a pretty big dude too. At 6'5", almost 300, I'm like 290 last I checked. Um, just one, just one of these meals um, is good enough for me. That's all I need, just the one. And I'm not just saying that because it was written down somewhere. I mean, I'm legit, 
<laughs> I only need one. Uh, these pins are grimy. I just have the circuit board straight in there. So let's have a look. Three, two, one, any luck? I don't see anything yet. Hmm. You're saving time for yourself. No big old trips to the grocery store. No buying like too many ingredients and stuff like that just to get, you know, one meal made. You know, you've done that before. And two minutes in the microwave. That's it. In fact, I don't mind if I do immediately. This one's gonna be the shredded chicken parmesan fusilli and garlic broccoli. Cool. I'm telling you, I'm efficiently lazy. Two minutes. That's it. There goes. Big reveal. I mean, come on. Look at the big old chunks of chicken, too. None of that weird canned shredded nonsense. This is legit, man. I mean, come on now. You ain't gonna offend me with big old pieces of chicken like this. Mmm. Uh, oh. So good. So far, I've had chicken, steak, pork chops, pasta, a little bit of everything. And I haven't been disappointed with any of it yet. I need to get back to fixing the game. I don't want to put the fork down, though. Uh, okay. It is clean eating without the hassle. Pick your meals again. I went with the calorie smart one. It's nice too, not just the meals, but they also have juices and smoothies. In fact, I'm literally drinking a smoothie right now. I got the uh, mango one. Mm -hmm. uh, plant based, 100% plant based. Cool. It's an easy at home lunch. You can bring it to work too and make your coworkers all jealous and all that. Don't lose it in the Super Nintendo. Once again, right in there. Here's hoping, hoping, hoping. You can see me in the reflection and this is gonna be, I wish it was not as, oh, hey, look at that. Oh, that's a beautiful sound. Whoa, it got super bright for a second. Head to factor75.com slash johnrig60 and use code johnrig60 to save 60% off your first factor box. Well, I'm going to enjoy the rest of my factor meal as well as my smoothie. But in the meantime, let's talk about this five-star Super Castlevania 4. I absolutely loved this game when it first came out. I was a big fan of Castlevania. Most were. And even back then, I knew it was the newer Castlevania. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, Castlevania's one through three. They all kind of look the same, feel the same. This one, your character's a little bit bigger, a little bit more defined. Your whip can hang and you can like manipulate it with just the D-pad and kind of like wiggle it around and stuff like that too. There's some strategy in there too, like blocking uh, shots and all that. But even though it doesn't quite feel like a Castlevania game sometimes, it's still totally a Castlevania game all the time, if that makes sense. Love the weapons, love the sounds. Again, great music with this game. You can't go wrong. And in my benefit, one of the easier Castlevania games to beat, too. I mean, because Castlevania, as much as we love this game, it's it's a pretty hard game. All, all, all three of them, in my opinion. And then this one came out, and it's playable. It's beatable. Well, and the good news is uh, there's a password system, which helps. Yeah, well, and I guess there is for Castlevania 2 as well. Uh, but with this one, because it's linear, you, 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 can, you can just continue from where you were. And, um, and do better next time, man. One of my favorite things about the Castlevania games are the bosses, because they, I mean... Dracula, Frankenstein, a mummy, Medusa, they're all public domain and you just do your best. And of course, utilizing some implementation with Mode 7 and then the Super Nintendo made this game a winner for sure. Five stars indeed. And whenever I beat a boss, I always try to whip downward when I collect the orb. Oh, there you go. All right, I rule. Anyway. Interesting to see that Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Conquest, is the one that got the five star rating and not the first one and not the third one. They gave it to the second one as a five star game. Now, first of all, the pun, Diddy's Conquest. Diddy's Conquest? It's like Conquest? Come on. It actually took me forever to realize that. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're a big fan of Donkey Kong Country, you're going to love Diddy's Conquest. Uh, Donkey Kong Country 2 is the one that gets the five-star rating. This time, never mind Donkey Kong. You're playing as Diddy Kong. Donkey Kong is the establishment. We already know who Donkey Kong is. Thank you for paving the way. And now uh, showing some love to uh, the, 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 the player 2, basically, from Donkey Kong Country, uh, is now the player 1 in this one. And it also introduces uh, the other characters as well. But it still plays like a Donkey Kong Country-style game, which is fantastic. And still, uh, just with the effects that they could use now at this point and then everything it's absolutely a, a wonderful playthrough and i love the fact intentional or not i'm guessing it was totally intentional but the climbing element a little bit like a donkey kong jr you know a little throwback for you know dinosaurs like myself <laughs> you gotta love that donkey kong country 2 not donkey kong country not donkey kong country 3 but the second one got a five star rating in this book Earthbound was an interesting one when it came out. I was I was very uh, interested in Earthbound. I, I was kind of drawn to it, if you will. I was drawn to it because 
it was an RPG, but it didn't play like every other RPG out there. Um, I mean, it, a gameplay style, play-wise, controller-wise, yeah, of course it did, a little bit. A little isometric view and everything. But it was the fact that it took place kind of in a modern time. So many RPGs uh, either took place in a fantasy land, or they took place in, like, medieval times. Uh, usually more often than not, you know, like, with swords and magic and sorcery and, uh, you know, weapons and armor and upgrades and stuff like that. And this one is a baseball bat and clothing and you know cheeseburgers i mean it's like it's it's totally just it's the rpg style um and i always loved the artwork of this game too i remember a lot of people back there was like oh you know the graphics are like you know graphics are terrible because they look so like simplistic i was like no that's the charm it's supposed to look like a cartoon i would think it looks it looks like something out of a sunday morning comic strip and again with the rpg style again with the fighting style a bit more like a fantasy star which is a kind of nice you know mix up because well more i guess you could also say a little bit more like a dragon quest or dragon warrior if you're from my time um just that kind of like here's the enemy and what do you want to do with it and go from there <laughs> and uh, always love the trippy background visuals and stuff like that and uh with uh, with earthbound so yeah kind of cool and i i believe it's a five star game Final Fantasy III. Well, we know this as Final Fantasy VI now, uh, globally, uh, but growing up, you had Final Fantasy on the NES, and then Final Fantasy II and Final Fantasy III, both for the uh, both for the Super Nintendo. Final Fantasy II did not get a five-star rating. Uh, unfortunate on my end. I actually prefer Final Fantasy II over Final Fantasy III. That's just me personally. Uh, but Final Fantasy III, absolutely excellent. I'm not even the biggest JRPG fan, and I've played through this game several times, just because it's that fun. It's that cool. Love the music. Love the sound, love the graphics for the time, too. Uh, this was the game that was just like, I mean, there's still role-playing games today stealing from this game <laughs> back then. Tells you uh, how much of the standard test of time it is. Don't need to talk about it too much, but yeah, Final Fantasy III definitely made the list. Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. This, and I have to get myself out of my born in the 70s, grew up in the 80s, lived in the 90s mentality. This is the Legend of Zelda game that many people played for the first time. Their first Legend of Zelda experience, especially for people maybe in their mid to late 30s, this was their first Legend of Zelda game. And what a great experience for the Legend of Zelda to start with this game. So smart that you don't start with a sword. And I'm not kidding with that, because at first when I played, I was like, well, where's my sword? I can't go out without my sword. Yes, you can. You don't need your sword. It proves that you can go through this game. Not Maybe not all the way through this game, but it proves that, you know, you don't need a sword. You're just starting your adventure. You don't have a sword yet. You're not even Link, unless you named yourself Link. I named myself Riggs, and I'm, I'm, you know, everyone's calling me Riggs and stuff like that in this game. And it's like, you, you ever go back? You ever, you, ever, you ever go back and, like, name yourself Link just so you wouldn't be confused? I know I did. Now, you don't have to go very far until you finally do get a sword, but still... I do love me some Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. It's been a long time since I've played all the way through this. Might have to do that again, just for old time's sake. I wouldn't forget about you, Scoot. Come on now. Mega Man X, five-star game. Of course it's a five-star game. It's one of the best. I was, me personally, taking it all the way back, I was so adamant on not wanting to like this game. Because how dare you change what he looks like? How dare you add a different storyline to Mega Man? Out of all the other Mega Mans we've been through, and now you're just gonna make a Mega Man spinoff and have it be kind of similar, but not exactly the same, but still kind of the same, almost exactly the same, and still the same idea where you can beat robot bosses and steal their upgrades and steal their items, but be a different game? How dare you? Well, they dared, and it worked. And <laughs> so now you can have the Mega Man series, and now you can have the Mega Man X series. And of course, from there, we've had a ton of other Mega Man type things with the battle networks and all that too. But Mega Man X, what a great introduction. There is a two, there is a three. Those are fine. But Mega Man X, man. Mega Man X, man. Yeah, this is fantastic. And I just, and it's I still with, when you can choose your stages and choose your levels and choose where you want to go. And, um, you know, if you don't have a guide or anything, you just have to hope to choose and guess what boss may be weak to a certain weapon. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, very, very fun game. If you haven't done so in a while, even a while, maybe check out Mega Man X again. SimCity was the game that a lot of people played on the Super Nintendo for the first time. Now, I was very aware of SimCity for the computer. I want to say PC. It's not a PC. I, I, people get on my case about that sometimes because I didn't grow up as a PC gamer, computer gamer, or anything. 
we did have an Atom computer with a Coleco adapter just to play ColecoVision games. Like, I'm saying PC for computers as someone's mom might say Nintendo for all video games, right? So it, I was very aware of it being a computer game. We played a little bit of it in school, and I didn't exactly know what I was doing, but then I got much better on the Super Nintendo version, and the controls just worked. And they also added a little bit of that Nintendo extraness. It looks like you're working. It looks like you're planning and preparing, and it looks like, it, like playing this game feels like a job sometimes. But then they added a few elements to make it a little bit more Nintendo friendly and everything like that too. And they kind of walk you uh, through a lot of the way too. I just liked doing the scenarios. I just liked going straight to a city that's already built and then doing all the chaotic elements and then fixing the city from there. And that was the way I played this game. But I mean, it's still a fun game and I still like the music to this game too. The same composer for uh, Pilot Wings and Mario Kart was uh, SimCity, I think. Maybe I should do research before I just start recording videos. I don't know. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. How about that? I was very happy to see Space Megaforce make this list as a five-star game because I don't think a lot of people talk about Space Megaforce as a shooter that deserves to be a five-star game. 100% it deserves to be a, uh, a five-star game in my opinion, and it's a great shooter. Now there's a ton of shooters for the Super Nintendo. You talk about UN Squadron, a you know nostalgic favorite of mine, Gradius 3, a ton of other ones too. And Space Megaforce, more people may know it today from a collector's standpoint, but back then when we were just playing games that there wasn't a value to them, you just played what was in front of you. Um, what a great game this was, and what a fun game this was, and so chaotic, but still very manageable. It wasn't like bullet hell, except for maybe on your side when you're the one launching all the bullets <laughs> at the enemies. Uh, but it's super, super fun with Space Mega Force. Uh, super long levels, too. The levels just seem like they go on forever, but it just, it just lasts, you know, the longer gameplay and all that, too. And not quite the type of game to, like, when you die, for instance you feel like you want to reset the game. Because sometimes there's some games like Gradius, for instance, where it's like you have all your mega upgrades and then you die and then you start again and you're like, you're super slow with like nothing. Well, this doesn't feel like that when you do die. So it gives you a chance to, you know, maybe maybe want to play it longer. Now, after Street Fighter 2, the game that took the world by storm, we had Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting Edition. This is the one that you can go a little bit faster. You can play as the four other bosses. The first Street Fighter 2, you couldn't play as Balrog or, uh, or you know, Sagat and stuff like that. Yeah, you couldn't play as M. Bison, but in this one you could. And there's a reason why Street Fighter 2 is an S tier game today. It's a five star game today. There's a reason they never went to Street Fighter 3 for so long because you didn't need to go to Street Fighter 3 for so long because this game was still making money. And that was the old joke was like, oh, well, you know, well, what if Capcom could count to three? Well, never mind the fact they had a billion Mega Man games. This was the game and it's still fun today and I still enjoy playing this game today. And another five star game was Super Street Fighter 2, The New Challengers. You get people today who talk about how much they hate DLC. It's like, oh, why, you know, remember back when you could just buy a game and it would be complete and you didn't have to download anything? I was like, yeah, it was called Street Fighter 2 and it made me purchase the game three times in a row just to have a couple of new fighters. I would have loved it if they had the option for just, you know, hey, pay an extra 10 bucks to download a few new fighters. I would have loved that. But no, I'm paying $60, $70 at the time just because I want to play as, you know, Fei Long, because I want to play as Kami. This is the introduction of Kami, and Kami has been around uh, this whole time now. Imagine all the non-cosplaying Kamis that we would have had by now, you know? Plays very well, plays very fine. I don't know if I would have given this a five-star rating. Uh, Hyper Edition for sure. This one's like, ah, it's it's not as much of a difference, even though it has four new fighters and everything, but you know, I'm not the one who wrote the book, so there you go. Another great Konami game in Sunset Riders. Let's make a new IP while we're at it. Now they could have just made Wild Wild West Contra. You had Contra in space, Contra with the aliens. Now you have Contra uh, in the Wild Wild West. Well, why would you do that? Don't do that. <laughs> Leave Contra as Contra and let's make a new game called uh, Sunset Riders. Four playable characters to choose from, had the cartoony graphics. These were the great arcade style graphics and sounds of the time. Very, very well port to the Super Nintendo, as well as the Sega Genesis. And the Super Nintendo version plays super awesome, super great, super well. Um, I, I, have, I have no complaints about this. Would I have given it a five star rating? Uh, I mean, maybe. Maybe, but who am I to say? It's a great game, it's a classic, it's nostalgic. It's the game that you also play too, where it's like everyone talks about, oh, remember Contra, remember Castlevania, this, that, the other. And they're like, oh, you know, remember that uh, Sunset Riders? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it becomes that other thing that people talk about. Marry me with my money. 
Super Mario World, of course, has to make the list for a five-star game, and underratedly one of the greatest screen attracts in video game history. This title screen, this logo, uh, it shows everything you can do as Mario in this game. It shows Yoshi, it shows you can pick up the shells, it shows you can do different things in this game. And of course, when you play the game, the ability to fly with the cape, yay, but I think really the biggest selling point, well, it's not just the ability to fly, who cares, uh, it's Yoshi. The fact that you have a dinosaur companion that you can ride and kind of counts as an extra hit point too, you can consider it that way, I always did. <laughs> and, and do those other jumps too that unfortunately make you lose Yoshi, but Yoshi will always come back. I <laughs> uh, don't need to talk about Super Mario World too much, but yeah, five star for sure. And I would also absolutely give Yoshi's Island a five star as well. Uh, I'm glad they did this too. I mean, it's subtitled Super Mario World 2. I don't even care about the Super Mario World 2 part. This could have just been its own thing. Don't even don't even call it the sequel to another game. It's Yoshi's Island. It is its own thing. It has nothing to do with, I mean, because you're not playing as Mario. In fact, you're protecting Mario. What's up with that? And you play as Yoshi or the different versions of Yoshi, different colors. We say, Yo is Yoshi plural? Yoshis? Maybe Yoshi itself is plural. So you play as Yoshi. <laughs> in different colors, and you can uh, you know grab these eggs or create your own eggs and use them as weapons in this game. Gotta love that too. I'm a huge fan of this game. This is the game that also started kicking off the Nintendo idea of hey, we can just do 8-bit graphics, 16-bit graphics, but why don't we make it look like it's done with uh, colored uh, pencils? Why don't we make a game that looks like it's made out of yarn? Why don't we make a game that looks like it's made out of construction paper? This is the first game that did that, where it's like, well, we could just do great graphics on a game, but why not make it look like it's, you know, kind of stenciled with colored pencils and stuff like that too, or oil colors and, you know, what a fun idea. Let's do more of that, and they did. Metroid 3, we know it best as Super Metroid. Oh my goodness, out of all the five-star games, this one might be the five-stariest. Um, what a throwback too. Uh, people who never played Metroid or even Metroid 2 for the Game Boy, you can start with this game. It shows you a little bit of the, the history, the background. Um, there are some throwbacks to the other Metroid games too, uh, especially like once you get through this, you know, first little part two, and it, you immediately have to do that, you know, the the heart racing, <laughs> times ticking, and everything. And then when you land back on the old planet here, and you're going back through, like you know, where you had to go through again to go through, you know, with the whole Metroid, the first one and everything. You know, a little throwback, a little like, oh, you know, this used to be here, this was over here and everything. Metroid is so good. Metroid is so fantastic. And uh, Super Metroid is still probably the best Metroid of all of them. Now oh, that one for the Game Boy Advance was really good too, but I, th I might have to give it to Super Metroid. Just with everything, it definitely, there's that heart pounding moment at the end of the game where you just throw yourself back in your seat and you throw up the devil horns and you're just like, ah, yeah. That, that nothing will ever top that feeling in video game history, probably. Hey, we have a sports game on the list. Tecmo Super Bowl. Well, Tecmo Super Bowl, they had it for the NES. Now they have it for the Super Nintendo, and it plays like a better version of the NES game, I suppose. Um, it also has weather elements too, which is kind of fun with the snow, with the rain. So it's it's Tecmo Bowl, it's Tecmo Super Bowl, and it's on the Super Nintendo, and that's fun to see. While we're capitalizing on Yoshi, let's do Tetris Attack. If this game came out today, people would say, oh, it plays like an app. It's like, an, it's like a mobile game. Yeah, but it's so good. It's so good. It's, just, it's addicting and it's good. It could have been on anything. It happens to be on Super Nintendo and it happens to be a five star game. Don't question it. Play it, it's awesome. What games were missing from the list? I know I had, I mean, like, Pilot Wings? Where's my Pilot Wings? I, 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 a bunch of them, too. Uh, but you let me know what you thought should have been on this list for the five-star Super Nintendo games. Thank you so much for watching. We'll do more in the near future. Subscribe now, please. Thank you.